Well, good morning and welcome to the beautiful banks of Parker de Brenta. Absolutely buzzing to be here. I've wanted to fish this lake for a very, very long time. I've wanted to catch a carp in Italy for a very long time. As you can see, it's glorious, the sun is shining, but that wasn't always the case. Very early this morning, it's very, very cold. I had a big frost and yeah, it was a bit of a cold one. Got a backdrop of snowy mountains. I don't know if you can see here because of the, the aperture and the blur in the, in the background, but behind me, just sort of behind here is snowy mountains. So I was a fool not to realize that it was gonna be some frosty nights at this point. I think that's maybe we'll have one more and then the rest of the week it's going to warm up through the nights and that's what we want. Long old drive down here, 24 hours door to door. We did come um, a day early. We'd actually left four o'clock UK time on Thursday, drove all the way through the night, got to Italy and um, then Friday, stayed at a bed and breakfast, had a pizza, had some nice cold beer, um, was chatting away with the locals and all the rest of it. It was good times meeting some of the lads that we're fishing with and yeah I actually bottled it at first and I think I had six or seven beers and went to bed early I hadn't slept for like 38 hours or something like that and I just soon I just crashed I had a bit of a headache and needed to go to go to sleep so after a pizza and another one final beer and that was it I was gone I'm in swim 14 I came out at sixth in the draw so it wasn't too bad I got my third choice swim so for sixth I think that's pretty good and um, my, my number one choice was 13 and um, but Lawrence who came fifth got there but you know I've, I've had one this morning First Parco fish. Absolutely stunning common. Sweet, there she is. I'll get her up. That's what dreams are made of, a big Italian churners. Oh. I'm have to use the old knees for this one. Nope. How's that? We're looking alright? Yeah, it's good, mate. Oh. Let's get her back. Uh, 50 pound common, so I can't complain too much. You know, the carp gods are with me on that one, and there's been a lot of fish out there showing uh, this morning, and I'm fingers crossed for another one. So far, I think there's been five or six fish out. Um, Alan's had one, and the lads in the bay, uh, they draw drawed first, and they went in, in 17 in the sanctuary, I think they call it. They've had a couple of 30s as well. Looks like there's a lot of fish in there, but from what I can see, slightly smaller ones, but I mean, 30 is not a small fish, but you know, for this lake, it's a, a mad place. So many big fish. Pretty difficult setup. Um, it was sunny like this yesterday morning, but we had to wait for Antonio to cut the grass before we could do the draw. And then as we sort of were getting just about to finish uh, the draw and, and get picked up, these big black clouds came in. My gear got absolutely hammered and I got soaked before I could get the house up. All my gear got smashed with hail and rain and, and then the big winds. And to be honest, it was so windy, had these crazy easterly winds that I just couldn't even get the gear really set up properly. I couldn't led about, I couldn't put the boat boat out. It was just pretty nuts. So I sort of had to chuck and luck it a little bit for the first few hours. And then about 10 o'clock when it died down, I got the rods back out over some fish. And yeah, like I say, it ripped off this morning with a nice 50 pounder and I can't complain. You know, really, I think my goal is five fish in a 60, but we'll see how things go. I think there'll be plenty of fish out. It's not fishing as well as it, it does in, in the summer. When it gets really hot here, the fish respond and you can get a real carve up on this lake. You can get lots and lots of bites, as I'm sure many of you have seen. But right now the fish are big. It's probably six, seven weeks until they spawn. So they are gonna be big. I don't know how many 60s, 70s and 80s are in here right now, but there's there's certainly a few. And yeah, I've got my, my uh, heart set on a 60 pound common. I've wanted to catch six pound common for a very long time. So I've wanted to fish this lake for a very long time. So uh, the Spurs won, which is obviously a buzz yesterday. Spurs won, the Gooners lost, United lost. So finally starting to play some good football under Conte. So I'm absolutely buzzing with that. And then I caught 50 in the morning. Like uh, my mate Sutcliffe said to me the other day, with Carlsberg could make fishing days, that would be a one for me. Over the moon with that, great result. Fingers crossed, it won't be too long until I get the next one. Like I say, there's been a lot of them out there. Man City and Liverpool are playing later today. I'm pre pretty sure that's gonna be the league decider. So I hope it doesn't fall down to some cheap VAR decision, which normally happens with Liverpool involved. But you know, that's not for here. <laughs> and yeah, I'm gonna uh, get this rod back out, get some spums over the top, and then hopefully catch some more fish today. Fingers crossed some of the other lads get into some and we, yeah, we'll get the spots rocking and catch some big Italian churners. Ciao bella. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> I don't need to now, that's it. There we go. PV Common. It's only the first morning. I had a couple of 50s. This one's 5810, wasn't it? Yeah. Another one on the Richworth. Nice, mate. Whoa, absolute beast. Sure. I'll show you the other side. It's got a really cool little scale. Almost like a mirror scale placed in the top. And then I'm going to get a bucket. A very keen man with a bucket in front of me. <laughs> Slap you off first. Mm, looks it. This one's definitely been launched. There we go, 58. Get in. Let's get this mic off. And, uh, let me have it. Can you have it? Come on, mate. Come on, mate. I'm getting that one back. To be fair, I'm pretty hot. Mm. Nice sunny weather, mate. You'll enjoy all the nice weather. There we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, right in the air. <laughs> oh. Woo! Let's get her back. Good afternoon. Once again, the sun is shining on the beautiful banks of Parco. It's uh, absolutely roasting, and uh, unfortunately, it's been a pretty quiet day. I don't think there's been a single fish out um, since uh, this morning. It's now getting up to sort of afternoon, uh, sort of midday. Lawrence's brother, um, Phil, he had he had a nice common this morning. Um, I think it was 35. Really nice golden one, as they all are in here with that beautiful clear water. But apart from that, like I say, the sun's come out, burnt all the frost away, and not much has really happened. I must admit, I've, I was thinking with the temperature coming out, it is, uh, it's going to rip off and uh, some other people are going to catch some fish, but unfortunately not much has been out. I hear the boys are over on the point of uh, got plagued by catfish last night, so it's, uh, <laughs> which is not ideal, no one really likes them. It's not even the Wales catfish, it's channel catfish, which to be honest, I've never seen before, and they're bit more chunky, not as long, but yeah, still just as gross. Horrible things. I've still got my rods in from this morning. I've been topping up uh, every couple of hours, doing three or four spawns out, out of my main open spots, and I am fishing in the deep water. I think it's about 20 odd foot, 25 foot where I'm fishing. That's where I had both the, the 50s from. A bit of exploring, and I've just down to my, to my left, I've got this reed line, and I, there was a few fish showing there last night, and I, I've managed to climb up a tree and, and watch, and there was about 100 fish down there. It's pretty mad. Loads of carp, but all of them were, there was the odd 30, but most of them were sort of 20s, um, like upper upper doubles and 20s and some some stockies, and that bit's about seven foot there. And I must admit, a lot of if a lot of the lads that are fishing on the road, I mean the shallow water, are catching the smaller fish. The same up in in 17. And like, like I say, I'm, my main spots where I'm fishing deep, I've had both the, the you know two of the biggest fish of the trip. So it's definitely something in that. I think the bigger girls are lurking in the deeper water. So I will focus to most of my rods on those. I have uh, moved one over. I sent. I basically baited it up by hand and then um, brought my bait boat round and walked around, watched it through the reeds and drove my bait boat with a load of hopper of pellet and, and dropped it straight straight on top of it. And they, they were feeding on a bit of the pellet and I'm surprised I haven't had a take so I need to go up there and check because there's so much fish there. I put a load of bait out there last night and none of that is left um, at all. So they're definitely getting on it but for some reason I'm either getting done or they don't like the hook bait. So I've just put a little trim down sort of S-core match the hatch wafter and it trimmed right down. It's probably sitting at about 12 mil. And if they won't take that, I don't know what they'll take. So yeah, it's a bit bit of a weird one really. So I thought I'd play around with that today. And fingers crossed that one would rip off midday. Um, I think I had that 58 around lunchtime yesterday. It's coming up to that now. And unfortunately the, the lake is dead. You never know, it only takes one and it might just rip off. I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, I was, thought I was starting to get some, some consistency. I must have it. I had one too many beers um, in that sunshine whilst watching the football yesterday. The barbecue helped um, sort of settle me down a little bit, but 
I was pretty knackered and went to sleep and pretty early but through the night they were just boshing over me, over me, over me. I repositioned two of my rods and um, one of them um, again unfortunately had a, had a cut off and um, absolutely ripped off and it's grinding on something it must be that bar out there and again it, it cut off so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that one but gutted I was hoping to sort of get one fish every 24 hours I was getting a bit quite consistent and, and that lost fish has is, is sort of broken up my consistent run and I was hoping I'd pick another one up today but obviously that's, that hasn't happened as of yet there's still time I'm going to reel in a bit later I think the boys are cooking pasta for dinner and sp spaghetti and meatballs win in Rome so yeah a couple of days in now and yeah it's sort of started to slow down a little bit and it is slow for this lake standard anyway but I'm hoping that with the, the heat the fish and the big girls will start feeding and we can start to, to get some consistent um, feeding going so we've all of us have kind of got spots going but really I think no one's had more than two or maybe three fish. Um, so again, it's, it's a bit slow and it, in terms of the big ones, it's only really me that's had any anything that's 50 plus. So hopefully if a couple of 60s and some more 50s and even 70s and 80s might show up. You never know, we're in the right place for it. So I'll keep you updated, enjoy the sunshine, try not to get sunburnt. And yeah, fingers crossed this afternoon, it might just churn off. down there. Another one on the rich earth. Beauty. Let's get it back. Oh. So this is the second one I had last night. No, the third. Um, 56. 56 and a half, I think. Oh, absolutely beating me up. She's one of four last night and I lost one. So a bit of a Toby Carvey last night for me. Hopefully it can continue, I can get a few more. It won't be long till that 60s here, is it? Woo! Okay, let's get it back. Oh! Woo! She's all... Look at her go, submarine. I thought it'd be a good time to speak a little bit about the rig I've been using here at Parco. This is a rig I've been using for a couple of years now, both uh, abroad and back home. Caught PBs again, both in Europe and back in England. Very simple, but there's a few things that give it a little bit of an edge and there's definitely some thought behind the process of why I do certain things. And I'll just talk through it now. Obviously the hook bait wires just start off there. There's two grains of plastic, but you can use this with anything, the trim down bottom bait. I tend to use a trim down wafter with a tiny little sight, like a little yellow or pink or something on top. But for this, I've just put the corner on so it's easy to see. The hook there is a size four and um, power curve, PB product power curve. As sharp as you like out of the packet, strong, um, you can't beat it. The braid itself, this is probably my favorite product. It's the, this is a 15 pound armor braid um, in the gravel. It's absolutely beautiful stuff. It's like tow rope. Um, it's so supple as you can see there just just from the weight of that putty and it's so supple but it's so strong and it just hasn't let me down and again I've got that bit of putty in the middle be very nice and heavy soft and easy to use and that just helps it sink down and what it also does is you'll see I've got here if I've got this this loop I do this big loop one so I can attach it to the lead and um, but two um, what it does is I put the bit of putty here and it acts as a little bit of a hinge one of the weaknesses of braid is that it's easy to tangle. I mean, this is in a solid bag and you hope that you nail them when they first hit the bag, but if they don't, I, I find it, it is, acts as another hinge and it will kind of reset. You want it to be coiled a little bit. And again, I think that bit of putty also acts as an anchor when, when they do pick it up. 
Moving on to the lead there, it's a size 4 um, PB lead again. This one is fished drop off system. I've got that to 45 pound silk ray, um, just a little bit of a tail rubber. And yeah, it's nice and supple. I mean, look at that, that stuff is brilliant. And yeah, this, there's a, this particular rig, you can use it, like I say, use it over particle, use a bit two grains of corn like I've got there, or even if you, you know, you're fishing boilie, you can put it in a bag with a load of boilies and, and just trim down wafter or something like that. I think at a time where Ronnie's are super in fashion, all the stiff rigs, I think this is a forgotten art a little bit. And you know, th th this, especially with that size four um, drop off lead, that will absolutely nail them. And I, th I don't think there's any better um, product for, for hooking fish than braid, because it acts so natural in the water. They just, they suck it up and it, go straight in there and they just don't know what they're getting fished for and um, especially when they're, they're mugging off all them rigs all the time this is this is my rig give it a try hopefully you'll get out there and catch a few bangers nice one Well, good morning. Don't know if you can see the look on my face, but um, it might describe disappointment because that is definitely how I'm feeling right now. Unfortunately, I, I did lose one, another one last night. That's three now that I've lost. Um, two cut-offs and one hook pull. That's probably more than what I had all last year. In the last couple of years, I've done pretty well in terms of hook pulls and losing fish. Don't tend to lose them. But yeah, the cut-offs. This time, it wasn't even a cut-off. The first one was grating out there, and I was fishing on top of the road, and I'm like sort of down on the slope of the road. There's like snags and stuff, and that was grating, where the fish was sort of diving and diving the opposite side of it, and it was grating in that cut. And you can understand that. That was on fluorocarbon. I'm using the old 18-pound uh, PB fluorocarbon. I absolutely love it. For a, for a fluoro, absolutely flies out and sinks like a brick. Strong, perfect. Anyway, so what happened is I decided to swap around my left hand rod. So I'm, f I'm fishing fluorocarbon, I fish fluorocarbon 90% of the time, you know, it's, it's not, a, not a far cast. Uh, I think it's 16 and, and a bit, 16 and a quarter wraps out to the nice little six foot sort of gravel bar before it shelves off. So, so basically what the lake is like, it's this nice shallow bit. So there's the side of the lake, it drops down six foot there for a good rod, few rod dents, that's where I'm baiting up. And that's why I'm seeing the fish sort of ghost in. Obviously there's a nice bit of water, nice depth of water in this hot weather. And then underneath that it goes deeper and then there's some like old tree stumps and all sorts of going on. And, and one of, well, two of the fish, when I was playing them, when they're coming towards me, they kept, you know, the lines got stuck on something and pinged off things. So I was conscious of the, obviously the 18 pound fluorocarbon sinking if I'm getting a drop back and getting in these snags. So what I decided to do is move over to some mono. On my spare spools, I've got mono. I've had this mono on there for a couple of years. It's not even been used because I don't use mono hardly ever. It's sync, uh, I think it's either 17 pound synchro, ESP synchro. Thought that should be strong enough. You know, it's got a good reputation. I've used it a fair bit. And uh, I was up all night getting woken up by this new rat that's just showed up. He keeps running across my bite alarms and keeping me awake. And obviously when I'm fishing locked up, got my door open, I'm just sort of boom, straight on the rod. And it's been the other bites have been fine. I've been able to get them away, not a problem. So with this synchro, I did finally, it came two o'clock, the rod's wet, bent round up, playing this really powerful fish, you know, it's sort of really strong. The rod's bent round and I'm playing it and playing it and playing it. Managed to get it away from the snag. It's all good. It's sort of coming towards me, coming towards me. And then it decides just to turn and go on a bit of a run on towards the, the, the snag. So I'm sort of, I'm, the clutch is set and I'm holding it a little bit, a bit of a hook and hold, but nothing too much. And it, it pinged and I was like, oh, what is that? A hook pull, oh no, because of the way it felt like a hook pull. So I reeled in and actually sort of in between where I put the bit of putty, the, the line had snapped and it, and it wasn't grated at all. I didn't feel any grating. So in my opinion, the line has snapped, it snapped above the knot where the knot is it couldn't have been where the knot is because of the way the putty was i knew exactly where, where that had been so I, that really baffled me and it's just and it, i'm really um quite frustrated by that because i decided to be proactive about solving a potential problem changed over my line and then caused another problem i think it was 17 or 18 pound synchro it should be more than enough but obviously not 
and I've got some proper kit out and I'm going to um, spool it up and hopefully it will do the job. This stuff, this is um, PV Products Control Mono. Amazing stuff, super abrasion resistant, casts like a dream and I think, it, to be honest, I, I was meaning to put it on and I ran out of time of work and it's my own laziness that I should, you know, I should have had this on in the first place. I thought that new synchro would have, would have done the job. Similar to what I did on Monday night is I baited up that back spot where I was up in the trees watching them all day. I baited it up quite heavily, I gave them two whole buckets, so probably a good 15 kilo of bait, waited all day and then cast it out at sort of at night once we've fed and, and had a fish pretty much straight away and then caught three off it that night. So I've done the same, I've reeled in, I've baited it up, I've done one bucket, I'll do another um, tonight just before you sort of getting the rods out before I go around for dinner. I'm on seven fish now, just law of averages. I've had them up to 58, guys had a 60 over across and I just, Something tells me that fish was, you know, just by averages, it could have been, a, you know, there's a good chance it would, be, it would have been a 60 and it felt big. I know they always do in this deep water and the ones that got away always feel big and you start to play mind games with yourself. But that one, I don't know, I just feel really salty about that. That's really affected me because I thought I was doing something good and yet the carp gods who give with one hand take back with thy other. Um, and he did me. So maybe it was a bit of misjudgment and bad angling on my, on my behalf. Let me know in the comments below if you've had any issues with Synchro. I certainly... Don't think I've heard of much, but I've used it in the past, not necessarily in this scenario, but I thought mono, it's not gonna drop down as much. If you get it dropped back, it will probably solve an issue. However, should have just kept the fluorocarbon on, but I'm going with the, the control. And I'm, you know, I've spoken to the boys at PB that have been using it for years, and some of my mates that have used it, and you know, that looks to be the one. So hopefully that will solve my issue and I'll catch a, a few bangers tonight. common this was 41 it's got beautiful white tips on its tail absolutely lovely fish stunning all of them here at Parkhurst so nice so many nice fish oh what a beauty the length Was it Ricky in? Keep the line off. I think it's literally on the corner. I hope there's no snag. Try and, try and side strain it along, across, low, and it, it will turn it. It will swim out. Oh god, that is horrible where it is. Seriously. I don't think it's that big. Oh my god, there's a massive tree there. Yeah. Oh no, that's horrible. Is that the other rod? Yeah, just stick it down on the front of the top. Go in front. Sick fish. Sick. Shoulders, nice. Bust her back. No. Well, good morning. Unfortunately, it's come to that time. It's the final morning on Parco de Brenta. I've absolutely loved it. I don't want to go home. I want to stay here for longer, catch some more chunk. The weather conditions have definitely changed, and the spots that I'm fishing, you know, have changed because of that. Um, I'm fishing in the shallower water just because the fish, they've just gone off that, that deep water now. So the last few fish that I've managed to have have been coming from you know, the, more, the more shallow water. I had three yesterday, sort of st stalking them and fishing in shallow water. I don't think they've had one off the point either. I'm not sure. I heard that Craig just over in Swim 7 or just over there across there, he moved from 17 in the sanctuary over to Swim 7 has had one this morning. Um, I think it's a 50, 50 plus so good good angling on his part. Alan moved down there as well in nine and he's got lots of fish sort of underneath this tree and, and, and in the edge, in the reeds and all the rest of it. So fingers crossed, he can get amongst a couple. I, I want him to get one big chunk of it. He's, he's worked hard, I think he deserves it, especially moving in that blistering heat that we had yesterday. We've got that last day today. Gonna get a pizza tonight. I started packing uh, earlier this morning before the sun came out, I started packing most things away. Just sort of getting, leaving the things out that I need for the, for the night, because I'm definitely gonna fish. Some of the lads are not gonna fish because of that long drive, but you know, I'm definitely gonna fish. And some of my best results have been in the last morning in, in, in these trips. I think those same spots that bait keeps going in. Like I say, I've kept one spot that the same the whole time. Like I say, I've got 10 now. Uh, 350s, um, a 50, a 56 and a 58, obviously the 56 and the 58 both being PBs, obviously the 58 is the, my, my biggest com ever common, um, which is awesome. Uh, I've had three or 
last maybe three or four forties and then some twenties as well. I don't even think I've had a 30. Um, I've sort of had twenties, forties, fifties. Now I just want that magical 60. Um, got one more night to get one more big and if not, then I'm very happy with what I've caught. I was, I was expecting this time of year to be a, a couple more bigger fish to be coming out, but it is what it is. Last week they only had 150, or 150 plus. So, you know, we've had, you know, quite a few more, so we can't complain, it's things are on the rise. It's slower than I was expecting. I know this place can be a real carve up when it really starts to warm up. Say we've had three or four hard frosts, um, wind storms, and now, we, now we've got um, blistering heat and high pressure. So it just not, hasn't been the one. The last few fish, their success have been coming from casting at showers. Um, you know, just PVA bags, casting at showers, one or two spawns over the top. And yeah, what I'm gonna do is, Relax, try and uh, catch them out the edge again today, and then fingers crossed, that final last night saloon, we'll get a big moon tonight, and we can have one last chunk. Fingers crossed, I'll keep you updated. And if not, then Parker de Brenner, you've been kind to me, I love you. Bellissimo. Well, as they say, unfortunately, all good things come to an end. It's now uh, the final morning on Parco. I've got maybe an hour left of rod time. Not even that, everything's packed up. The bivvy, all the gear, just sitting on the rods, waiting. Alan's sort of packing up his bits and bobs. He'll be coming around the van shortly. So there has been a few fish showing out there. So fingers crossed that there could be a last chance saloon of a big girl. But to be honest, they've been out there all night and I just can't, can't buy a bite. I've been recasting bags at showers. I've been up pretty much all night. I got wiped out five times by the same trailer. Um, almost had it in. Uh, it looks like a, a decent fish as well. Didn't never actually saw the fish, but w one of the time I just let it just take my line for ages. And then when I struck in, I had it tangled on for, for a while and played it in for about 10 minutes before it came off. And unfortunately, it's a shame. I think there's a few trailers going on here at the moment. Like I said, I've had a few cut offs myself, so I obviously haven't helped that, that problem. However, 10 fish, two PB commons. Really can't complain with that. Just can't wait to get back as the warmer weather kicks in this place can really kick off so i'd like to to come back in a, in a couple of years give myself another chance now it's time for that grueling sort of 23 24 hour drive door to door um hopefully we can get to france make a quick time and we can get an early ferry um you never know they, like, they made us wait last time an hour but i think because we've got a van they, they, they often you'll get other options with cars but because we've got a big van they didn't seem to do it last time so blitzing all the way and um, from you know we go through milan then to switzerland um, then to France, uh, and then obviously back to the UK. We'll be back Sunday morning, early afternoon. Lots of sleep to catch up with, enjoy the bank, Easter bank holiday. Spurs are playing in a bit, so hopefully they'll get a good win. My first fishing experience of Italy hasn't disappointed. It's exactly what I was expecting. Incredible fish, incredible scenes, great company, great food, everything you could ever want. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you on a bank sometime.